The PC Specialist 14-inch Fusion is powered by an Intel Core i7 processor and has NVIDIA graphics. As the name suggests, the screen is 14 inches on the diagonal, it's thin and light, and all up, laptop, power supply, and mains cable, we're looking at 1.9 kilos total weight. That's eminently portable. So the best move is to take it on our travels and see how we get on using the PC Specialist 14 inch Fusion in the real world. We're going to do a proper job, so it's off to Heathrow and let's pick somewhere exotic. Portugal? No, that's far too local. How about Ethiopia? Don't think so. Singapore is our first step, and then we transfer, and we go on to Penang in Malaysia. This should do the job nicely. So here we are in my nicely appointed hotel room, ready to do some work. Fun fact about Malaysia. The main sockets here are regular, British. Look at that. Proper plugs. But of course this does mean I might be anywhere. Who says I'm even in Malaysia? Let's just establish that fact, shall we? We step outside into the hot and humid weather of Malaysia and then it's up, up and away. And let's take a quick look around. Well that certainly looks exotic and foreign. We're definitely not in England, that's for sure. As you may have figured out by now, this B-roll was done during my trip to Penang with Intel when we looked around two of their production plants. It's a fascinating place and we had a great time. And now let's head back to ground level. Now I'm home again, I can look more closely at the details of this PC Specialist 14 inch Fusion. This particular spec laptop is priced at a penny under £1200 including VAT, so it's cheap. As I've already mentioned, all up including the power supply and power cable, it's under two kilos. It really is thin and light. However, you can easily go traveling without the power brick. The battery will last all day. That's a particularly good, strong point of this laptop. The processor is an Intel Core i7-13700H, so that's six P cores, eight E cores, and a TDP of 45 watts. It has 16 gigabytes of DDR5-4800 in dual channel. The Intel processor includes integrated graphics. However, the laptop has additional GeForce RTX 3050 six gigabyte graphics. That's approximately a quarter of an RTX 3090. The laptop chassis is by a company called Tong Fang. No, me neither. The curious thing being is that Tong Fang's website, which is a little on the Spartan side, does indeed list a current series of thin and light laptops, but they've moved on to 40 series graphics just as you'd expect, even though this is quite a new model. That leaves me slightly confused. The screen has an unusual resolution. It measures 2880 pixels wide by 1800 high. This is called WQXGA and it has a 90 hertz refresh rate. At present the screen's on 150% because when it's on 100% the icons are absolutely tiny. I think I'll show you that actually. I find this combination of graphics and screen slightly peculiar. We've clearly got the weediest of RTX 30 series graphics driving a high resolution screen. So it seems to me this is for looking at photos and watching movies. Uh, but the thin and light nature of the laptop definitely says this is a business laptop rather than a gaming laptop. And I struggle to believe that you'll want to look at a spreadsheet with a font of that size. Let's revert to 150%. Before we look at the performance of the laptop and also its behavior, and those are two slightly different things, let's first look at the connectivity. As mentioned, it's thin and light. We have no ports on the front or the back. There's no wired ethernet. It relies on Wi-Fi 6E, which is nice and fast. 
and also Bluetooth 5.3. The ports and connectors are on the two sides. On the one side we have the power jack, an HDMI 2.1, USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A, and a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type C. On the other side, we have a Thunderbolt 4 port, although oddly it does not have the Thunderbolt logo. We have the second USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A, an SD card reader, and also an audio jack. The keyboard is short travel, just as we'd expect on a thin and light laptop, and behaves perfectly well. The keyboard has white backlighting, which is absolutely fine in the dark environment and barely visible under normal room lights, can either be toggled using the control utility or you can use function six. The touchpad is absolutely enormous, is nice and responsive, and is lovely to use. The ventilated bottom cover is held in place with a handful of screws and is easy to remove. This reveals the 1TB P41 Plus SSD from Solidime and some Corsair Vengeance DDR5 memory. The layout is neat and tidy and as we can see we have a substantial battery in this thin light laptop. We're diving into Tongfang's control utility and we can see there are three power modes for the Core i7-13700H. Default is low power, we also have high power and a silent mode. Curiously, we can see that HW Info reports PL1 and PL2 remain constant at 140 watts regardless of the utility setting, which clearly cannot be correct. Let's see what happens when we run Cinebench R23 with a laptop in default low power mode. CPU is actually running at 35 watts, which is what we'd expect and the P cores are at 2.7 gigahertz. E cores are at 2.0 gigahertz. Fans are ramping up. The fans are clearly working fairly hard. The CPU package temperature a mere 60 degrees, so very cool indeed. But the laptop is somewhat noisy. For the second run, we're going to switch to high power mode. And here we go. CPU is now running at 45 watts. P cores are up to 3 gigahertz. And the E cores at 2.2 gigahertz. Cooling system is spinning up much quicker. CPU temperature is still very low and frankly that noise level is just beyond the pale. For the third run let's switch to silent mode and here we go. CPU is now drawing 18 watts, P cores are at a mere 1.6 gigahertz, E cores 800 megahertz. That's certainly quiet However, it is not silent. I suppose unless you had a fan stop mode, you couldn't really have true silence. It feels as though quiet mode would be a better name. Let's get a feel for what the graphics are doing. We're back in the default low power mode, running time spy stress test. GPU clock 1.1 to 1.2 gigahertz. Graphics chip power draw is 23 watts. Graphics power board draw 35 watts. Temperature of the graphics just over 50 Celsius. So we have a small graphics chip running slow, running cool. Cooling system has to work moderately hard. And the performance even by eye is nothing special, but it does function. And let's pull all that together and look at some performance charts, starting with Cinebench R23 multi-core. With the PC Specialist Fusion 14 in silent mode, we have a very low score of 6,300. Moving up to silent mode and 35 watts, we do somewhat better. Slightly surprisingly, high power mode doesn't make a lot of odds. The Core i7 in this laptop is perfectly competent, but it is set to much lower power than many other laptops that we've previously tested. And we can see this manifested in Cinebench R23 single core where the performance is surprisingly good. Because of course the power envelope makes almost no difference when you're limited to a single thread. In silent mode, not so good. In low power and high power modes, really good. Blender 3 classroom test pretty much replicates what we saw in Cinebench R23 with the PC Specialist Fusion 14 down towards the bottom of the chart. 
On the other hand, CPU power consumption is really good. In silent mode, a mere 18 watts. The other two modes, depending on the exact nature of the test, 35 watts and 45 watts. In 7-zip, we did a single run with the PC specialist on the default 35 watt setting, and performance was entirely in line with the power setting. Indeed, if you look at the other laptops, you'll see they're pretty much ordered by power. Moving on to ADA 64 memory bandwidth, the results are not so hot. We can pretty much ignore the ASUS ROG Zephyrus at the bottom of the chart that has excellent read and very low write. That would appear to be a function of low power memory technology. Then we have the PC Specialist running on DDR5 4800, which is quite a bit slower than the ASUS ROG Strixgar 17, which also uses DDR5 4800. And you can see the two versions of the MSI Raider GE76, the 2022 on DDR5, the 2021 on DDR4. This demonstrates the advantage of DDR5 and shows the PC Specialist Fusion 14, in terms of memory bandwidth, is struggling. 3D Mark CPU profile. Again on 35 watts, the PC specialist is almost at the bottom of the chart. And the same is true for 3D Mark Time Spy, just the CPU element. CPU performance, not so great. When we look at 3D Mark Time Spy overall score, i.e. combining CPU and GPU, again, the performance is not so good. On silent mode, we're below 3,900 marks. In low power mode, the performance is very little different, a mere 4,100. Stepping up to high power, we're close to 5,000, but we're a long way behind the other laptops. And then we come to gaming, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy at 1440p. Frankly, I expected very little from this laptop, and yet it did okay. In high power mode, that is a competent result. Even low power mode is okay. Silent mode, those 1% lows are a bit painful. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy at 1080. This is a genuine surprise. In high power mode, this laptop does perfectly well, and it's even good in low power mode. It is, however, struggling in silent mode. Far Cry 6 at 1440. The peculiar aspect ratio of the PC specialist screen means running actually at 1600p and the frame rates are not good. Far Cry 6 at 1080p and again we're running at a different aspect ratio 1200p on the PC specialist Fusion 14. Here the frame rates are struggling towards acceptable but not really quite there. 54 on average and 44 1% low isn't really good enough. Watch Dogs Legion at 1440, well that's just not going to work is it? For some reason we couldn't get a good result in low power mode, but high power mode and silent mode both fail. And finally we have Watch Dogs Legion at 1080p, and again we have some very poor results. The high power mode is terrible, and the low power and silent modes, the 1% lows, basically just stopped. We finish however on a high. PC Mark 10 battery test, goodness me, it's an absolute stonker. That Azus ROG Zephyrus we tested a year ago has done amazingly well, but right behind it we have the PC Specialist Fusion 14. And now we come to my conclusions and thoughts about the PC Specialist 14 inch Fusion. Pros, the good points. It has very good battery life, easily lasting all day. The chassis is thin and light, so taking it on your travels is an absolute doddle. The price is nice and low. This spec, as I've already mentioned, is about 1200 including VAT. And the point I haven't yet mentioned is the Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi 6E, it's really fast, very good. I didn't miss wired Ethernet one little bit. Cons, the negative points. The noise from the CPU cooler can get intrusive. The control utility that I've showed you to switch power modes and to control the keyboard lighting has a few other functions, but it doesn't appear to have any ability to update the BIOS or to keep tabs on drivers. I was tempted to mention the peculiar screen resolution and aspect ratio as a con, a negative point, but on second thoughts, I'm not actually clear if it's a strength or a weakness. It's just a difference from most other laptops on the market. So I'm going to leave it out of this conclusion altogether. The screen is absolutely fine. It's high resolution. It is certainly a little bit odd, but it looks good. And that's the main thing. Finally, the RTX 3050 graphics are a bit on the weedy side. Clearly, this is not a gaming laptop 
it's a work laptop, it's a general purpose laptop. And in that context, the 3050 is fine, but it has a mere six gigabytes of memory. And as we showed, if you do decide to play some games, you might get a result or you might suffer. Overall, I like it. It's a worth buying.